This is the fifth sermon, Khutbah al Khamisa, about the ta'aleem wa tarbiyah in Islam, the importance of education and purification of human soul. We are facing a chaos and crisis in the moral world. And there is a search and there is a thirst, al atash, for more meaning and morality in this world. There is a search for justice, for love, for honesty, for humbleness, for dignity and respect, because there is a vacuum of these values in this world. The Quran speaks about al hayat al tayyib Man amila salihan min dhakarin aw untha wa huwa mu'min, falanuhiyannahu hayat al tayyib and this is the Hayat al tayyib Hayat al tayyib comes through a ta'aleem wa tarbiyah, through a spiritual discipline that provides a path for permanent happiness. It's not just a little pleasure here and there. No, a permanent happiness, permanent peace, and success. The final goal of a ta'aleem and tarbiyah in Islam is Radwanullah. He is why for everything that we say, everything that we do, we say Qurbatan illallah. Qurbatan illallah is the highest goal. The intention of ibadah, the intention of everything in our life is that one step closer and closer to God. This is the goal. When we look at the, the secular life and secular culture, this is not the case. In the secular, only the interests are the goal. It is about interests, not about values. It is about society in general. <clears throat> now individual here and there, nobody cares about individuals. Just society in general. It's not about pleasure of Allah, it's about pleasure of people. It is only about science and knowledge, not wisdom. It is about facts, not truth. It is about domination over nature. A ta'aleem and tarbiyah, the scientific term, is about domination over the nature, not domination over our desires. A shaheed al-sadr, what is sirro? He talked about, he talked about, now we, we just welcome the brothers in a very respectful way. We ask them to, you know, be uh, considering and be quiet, but we should say it in a nice language, though. Salam ala Muhammad wa Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad Muhammad. He talked about <coughs> four kinds of relationship. Relationship between man and himself, man and God, man and society, and man and the nature. And the purpose of a ta'lim and tarbiyah is to fix this alaqat and this relationship. That it is peaceful, it is just, it is dignified, and it's honorable. <coughs> the purpose of my brothers and sisters based on the Quran is falah al insan. We came for falah, al falah, hayya al falah, for salvation, for success. We didn't come for al fashal, we came for al falah. 
We came for falah, not for failure. And the Quran says the way for falah is a tarbiyah, a tazkiyah. Qad aflah man zakah. Ya ayuha al-ladhina amanu isbiru wa sabiru wa rabitu wa taqullah la'allakum tuflihun. If you are looking for tuflihun, for falah and success and salvation, then there is a process to get there. You need prayer, you need patience, you need communication, and you need a taqwa. وَمَنْ يُوْغَ شُحَّ نَفْسِهِ فَأُولَائِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ The bridge to our falah and salvation is domination over your selfishness. If we can overcome our greed and ego, then there is a hope for falah and salvation. In another verse, وَلْتَكُنْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةُ يَلْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ وَيَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوْهَ يَنْهَوْنَ عَلِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَأُولَائِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ Muflihun in this verse are those who call for what is good, stand for what is good, and stand against what is evil. These are people of Al-Falah. The Quran said, إِنَّهُ لَا يُفْلِحُ الظَّالِمُونَ The oppressors should have no hope for falah and salvation. إِنَّهُ لَا يُفْلِحُ الْمُجْرِمُونَ The criminals should not count on success and falah in this life. إِنَّهُ لَا يُفْلِحُ الْكَافِرُونَ Those who don't recognize the authority of Allah in this universe, they cannot count on to fear and blessing of the Lord that they don't recognize. The Quran is the best message of salvation and success. In the Quran, Yahdi Lilati Yahweh. And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the best model of success. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ So Allah gave us a perfect message and a perfect model of ta'aleem wa tarbiya that we can get closer to God, we can achieve Rizwan Allah, and we can achieve the goals of God. This ta'aleem and tarbiya, brothers and sisters, starts from the house. Who أَنفَسَكُمْ وَأَلِيكُمْ نَارًا Save yourself and your family from hell. Start this from your heart, from your house. Parenting is not just to bring some kids in this world. That's the easiest part. The easiest part is just physical production of kids. Have ten girls and boys. That's the easiest part. The most important part is the parenting. To be a good pattern and to be responsible and to be able to raise our children right. That's the responsibility of the parents. So ta'alim and tarbiyah start from the house. And this is why Islam emphasizes on the values in the family tells the kids to be honoring their parents and to be nice and kind and helpful to your parents. The value in the, the family is based on tells the husband to treat your wives with ma'roof, treat them right what is right and what is ma'roof in a nice and kind way. And then it tells the parents to keep reminding the children about the values. The Quran teaches us to follow Abraham that told her children that there is only one thing I want from you. Make sure that you are a Muslim before you die. And we don't know when we are going to die. Death may come any moment. That means that we must make sure that we are Muslim all the time. 
And that means to submit our selves to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have to start ta'lim and tarbiyah in the house like Abraham did. We have to follow the, the system of ta'lim like Luqman, a man of wisdom. Allah says that we gave Luqman wisdom, man of wisdom. This man of wisdom talks to his children, what he says. Ya bunayya la tushrik billah. Don't mess up with the authority in this universe. Worship only one, one God, the Creator. Ya bunayya aqim as-salah, wa amur bil maru, wa nahal al-munkar, wa asbir ala ma'asawin. Don't forget your prayer. Don't forget your responsibility. Whatever is good, go for it. Whatever is bad, stop it. And be a man of patience and determination. Don't be arrogant. Your voice, your walk. Be a mother of humbleness. Be modest in your voice. Be modest in your walking. And brothers and sisters, if you want to pick up just one chapter from the Quran as a charter of al-Ta'lim al tarbiyah that is the chapter that we recite all the time in our prayer, Surah Al-Fatiha. We must recite Al-Fatiha in every prayer. There is no prayer without Surah Al-Fatiha, <coughs> except Salat al mayyid right? Every other Salat has Surah Al-Fatiha, whether it's Salat Wajib or Salat Mustahab, yeah, you can drop the second chapter, but the first one, Fatiha, must be read in every Salat, whether it's Wajib or Musahab Salat. In this chapter, Allah is giving us a GPS. You want to go to heaven? Surah Al-Fatiha is your GPS to navigate you. It's a navigation that goes through all the system, belief system, spiritual, intellectual, emotional, moral values, social, political, every standard that we need in our life is summarized in Surah Al-Fatiha, SubhanAllah. You are looking for the right road, that is Surah Al-Mustaqim. You want to be worried about wrong roads, that is Maghlubin and Dhali. You are looking for the role model. The role model are Alladina and Amta Alayhim. Min al Nabiyina wa Siddiqina wa Shuhada wa Salihin. There are four groups of people that their role models. Sarat al Ladina and Amta Alayhim. Man al Ladina and Amta Alayhim. Allah explained in another verse that Al Ladina and Amta Alayhim are Al Nabiyina. Siddiqeen al-Shuhada wa Salihin. The prophets, the people of truth, the martyrs, the righteous, these are your role model. So we have GPS, Surah Al-Fatiha. You want to go to Surah al mustaqim You want to go to heaven? Allah already gave you this. But then we have to use our brain too, right? We have the GPS. It doesn't mean that we just recite it and forget about our own brain. You heard something in the news just a few days ago that this lady from Belgium, she put the address in GPS and she started driving. And she was supposed to drive for 90 miles, right? She wanted to go to a destination that that destination was only 90 miles from her house. But she put the address and she followed GPS. And she says, this way, go this way and take that exit and get back and go right and get left. And she realized that she's been driving 900 miles instead of 90 miles. And she said, why am I losing the gas? She stopped three, four times and, and the gas station and you don't have more gas in her car. And then she's tired and then stopped by in the motel or hotel and she rests for a while. And finally she realized that she is not in Belgium anymore. She is now in a different country in Europe. And then, she said, my goodness, it's 900 miles. I was supposed to go only for 90 miles. Well, I followed GPS. 
Yeah, you follow GPS, but you didn't follow your own brain. I mean, Allah gave you a common sense as well. You don't follow just GPS. Maybe you put a wrong address. You Maybe you put a, a, a wrong city. Maybe something wrong in your GPS to begin with. Allah said that I gave you a way of navigation that you find Surat al mustaqim you get Radwan Allah, you get Ghufran Allah. Your final destination is heaven. Follow this. Say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This verse, 114 times in the Quran. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Compassionate and merciful. Alhamdulillah. You learn how to appreciate. al jazad ihsan illa ihsan Show your appreciation. Why? Because he is Rabb al-Alameen. He's not Fakar Rabbi wa Rabbu. Huwa Rabb al-Alameen. Rabb kullu shay, Rabb al-Nas, Rabb al-Alam. Not only Rabb al-Alam, Malik al-Yawm al-Din. He is the master of the day of judgment. So not only all the universe are under God, but you need him not only in this world, but even the next life. And then we say, Ya kana abadu wa ya kana sa'in. We pray like a group, not Ya kana abadu wa ya kana sa'in. Instead of me, myself, and I, we are talking about us. We are talking about we, not me, not I. The culture of worship together. And then we pray, Ihdina Sirat al Musabim. I'm looking for the straight path. Show me the straight path of Allah. Sirat al Ladina and Amta alayhim, Ghair al Makhub alayhim, but Abdul Alin. I don't want to go 900 miles in the wrong direction. And find out that I was looking for Surat al ladin and Amta alayhim, but now I am I end up with Maghubin and Dalin. Where I'm here, what I'm doing, wrong direction, wrong destination. Well, when they ask that lady that why this happened to you, where were you? She said, I didn't pay attention. <laughs> she said, I didn't pay attention. I was distracted. It was distraction. I don't know what you mean distraction. You are listening to the music, you are listening to different things on, on the radio and in your car. Or, or what happened to you that you didn't pay attention? You were distracted and then you found out that you are in different countries. Well, the same thing, if you Allah have, has given you this GPS of Surah Al-Fatiha, to go to the straight path and find your final destination if we don't pay attention, if we don't make the intention, if we don't say Qurbat al-Allah, if we do it Qurbat al-Nas, if we do it Qurbat al-Anwal, if we do it Qurbat for power and domination and selfishness, then that navigation cannot take us to our destination. We, we ended up in, in different, in wrong areas. <laughs> so brothers and sisters, ta'lim and tarbiyah start from the house. Ta'lim and tarbiyah start from our heart. It starts from an internal. You remember last week I talked about tazakiyah, but the general word is tarbiyah. Tazakiyah means purification, but tarbiyah is more general. It's about a spiritual discipline that tazkiyah is part of the tarbiyah. It's a general, general item that the goal of tarbiyah is at taqarrub ila Allah, radwan Allah. The goal, the purpose of a tarbiyah is a rushed. Wa hayyilana min amrina rashada. As the people of Kahf, as Habar Kahf, they ask Allah to guide them and to show them the path of irshad, to guide them to to the destination of a rush to grow up, to improve, to develop, to go higher and higher. And this is what we should ask as the goal of education and the goal of a spiritual discipline is that we get to the rush. That means al Jaliya Rashid. If we have a Rashid community, if we have a Rashid society, a community of a rush, a tabayyan al rush min al ghay a society of a rush, then we are talking about the subject 
call a ta'lim a tarbiyah. We are talking about total devotion to Allah and total domination over our, our desires. This is something that we as a community need to work together for Rosht, for Tazkiyah, for, for Tarbiyah, for Radwanullah, for that discipline that provides us with the path to success and salvation. A discipline that provides us with al hayat al tayyibah a life of honor, a life of respect, a life of love, a life of peace, a life of justice. This is the goal of al tarbiyah But if we waste our time and entertain ourselves, and serve our own selfish desires, then we cannot be part of this journey. We cannot be a community of Rosh. We cannot be a society of Rosh. There are so many, as I mentioned in the beginning, so much chaos and so much crisis in the family, in the society. I was part of, I'm part of this Imams, the Council of Imams in Michigan, Mahan, the, the co-chair of uh, of that council, and we had just a meeting in Detroit a few days ago, last Wednesday, talking about some of these issues in the community. And it's more than just one. A few days ago, I heard from that Hai uh, Zuhair Abdul he is a member of our board. He was telling me that now, even in Birbun Heights, no matter how many Muslim students, Arab students in school, in public school in, in, in Dirbun Heights, still they are feeding them with haram meat. <coughs> and there is nothing we as a community can do, unfortunately, because nobody from us, from the Muslim community, understanding of the, the halal and haram and Muslim values is part of the Board of Education and now we are entertaining ourselves, big dinner here and big expenses here. Somebody comes from Lebanon, somebody comes from Iran, somebody comes from somewhere else. We keep repeating this center and that center and that center. We are spending so much time, so much money, and the same people come and eat the dinner all the time. We go to this meeting, the same faces all the time. And then we are doing nothing for our community, nothing for our youth, nothing for our children. And we don't have even with the majority of the students in some of these schools, we cannot even have a word about this is haram, our children are not supposed to eat this meat. The Imams were talking about even the, the same problem in the, in the prison, in the jail system, in the country. Now there is a new law is coming that from April, if, if somebody is in prison and Muslim and so oh, I'm religious, I cannot eat pork. I cannot eat haram meat. He says, well, you are religious, then you are vegetarian. That means that from April there is no more meat is served to the Muslim, the observing, those Muslim who are observing their, their faith, they cannot have access to meat. Because they are religious, they have to eat vegetarian. That means somebody is there for another 10 years or 15 years, has to keep eating vegetarian forever. <coughs> so what is this? These are the issues and these are the smallest issues that we as the community now forget about those drug issues and alcohol issues and crimes issues and all these boyfriend, girlfriend results in, in the society. And there are so many other things, brothers and sisters. One of the things that we as imams were discussing in the, in the meeting was that, to my surprise, I do not know even one Muslim family in Dearborn with the license for foster parents. Can you imagine? Though every week I, I receive the families that they are coming to us and they are telling us that their kids were taken to the foster house and sometimes for silly reason, accident happened. You know, mom is busy or dad is busy in the house and all of a sudden one kid is going 
or over the uh, stairs, for example, and falls down. In just one moment, one accident, it happens. And all of a sudden, the police come and say, you are careless. You didn't take care of your kids. And now they take all the kids to a non-Muslim house, different culture, different values. And for such a long time, this has been happening, more than 20 years now. And still we don't have, as much as I know, in the whole our community, just one family with a license. I heard from the Imams there are only five Muslim with, you know, a license of a foster parent in the whole Muslim community. I mean, she and Sunni all together. And I assume those five are from the Sunni community though. These are the issues that we need to take care if you are talking about the Rushd al Jali al Rashid. If you are talking about the Rush, if you are talking about the Tarbiya, then these are the issues that we brothers and sisters have to take care of. But if we cannot take care of the meat for our kids in next door in Dirbun Heights, how can we take care of Al Qaeda in Afghanistan and Pakistan and Syria and and Iraq and elsewhere. And Mrs. Clinton comes and says that when we, we founded, we created Al-Qaeda to fight the uh, Soviet Union. And now we are fighting with them. You know, the first part of your uh, talk, uh, Ms. Clinton is right, that you created Al-Qaeda. But the second part that you are saying, we are fighting with them, not 100%. Yeah, you are fighting with them in certain areas, but you are helping them in some other areas. So if you are fighting Al-Qaeda, who killed uh, Muammar Gaddafi? They were like the Al-Qaeda terrorists who, who did all this mess in, in Libya. And if you are fighting Al-Qaeda, who is fighting those, you know, violent people who are slaughtering people in, in Syria now? If you are fighting them, how can they do what they are doing? Yeah, they were created, but it's not that they are, you know, they are fighting with all of them. Yeah, this, uh, some of them, the guy who came to power in Libya, they called him, he was an ex-jihadist or ex-terrorist. That means he was a terrorist in the past, but now he become, you know, the, the president. And maybe when his mission is over, he becomes terrorist again, we don't know. But so if we cannot take care of the little things in our next door, because we are spending too much attention, too much time, too much money for things that are not necessary, and we don't set the, the priorities, then we cannot solve either the local problem or, or international problem. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to Salat al-Mustaleem, especially the youth. Alhamdulillah, we have some positive signs when you see this uh, younger brothers and sisters, they are coming to Salat al Jummah. I hope that we come also to uh, the Sunday service. We have on Sunday one of the uh, young brothers who is coming to uh, talk with the youth and start knowing each other and to see what can we do for our youth more and more. Each organization is doing uh, something here and there, but we need to collectively and with cooperation do more and more to save this, this generation. And I mentioned uh, Sunday, I like to say that also this uh, Sunday breakfast is uh, uh, sponsored by the Safa family to the parents of uh, his uh, father and mother-in-law. But we are honoring uh, Marhuma K. Siblani. You know, this is another thing, that this lady who work and serve this community for more than 25 years, when I went to her funeral home in Warren City, I saw four or five people from the whole community over there. Every other person was Americans, her family, and you know, neighborhood. I saw four or five people from our community. I said, Hal jazal ihsan ilal ihsan. If somebody serves us, our faith, our community, our culture, our values, with her pain, with her time, we have struggled for decades and decades. And now this person who left her family, left her tradition, 
welcome the Islamic faith and Muslim community supporting the Palestinian cause and the oppressed cause and now she is dead. Where are we? Uh, except the person is not from our village, then we don't care anymore. When I was driving to, to that funeral home, somebody from community that you know, I don't want to mention name, from Florida, by accident he called me. And he said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to participate in the funeral of Casey Blani. She passed away. That lady, honorable lady, honorable lady who served our faith and our community, now she's dead. I'm going to a funeral. And he told me, believe me, Sheikh not too many people would care at all. He said, can I tell you something even more? If you, Sheikh Elahi, who's been serving this community for 20 years, if you die tomorrow, nobody cares. I said, that part I already know. Tell me something that I don't. But this is the reality, brothers and sisters. I like you, all of you, to be part of this uh, Sunday service because we are going to honor this lady. Please come with your family and there's a breakfast for everybody and service for everyone. And we are going to have, inshallah, next weekend, this Milad al-Nabi is coming, the birthday of the Holy Prophet, next Friday and next Saturday, and also Sunday morning, we are going to have a very special celebration and honoring the, the life and the blessings and the barakat of the Hayat al-Nabi, alayhi salam, bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, inna atayinak al-Kawthar, fasalli li rabbika man harf, inna shalaka huwa al-Tar.